Welcome to Hanging Out with Robert, that's me. This video is composed of things that I tinkered with throughout the day. For step-by-step -step detailed instructions of those tasks, you can click on the links in the comment section below. This video should contain tips and tricks of things that I've learned throughout the year. Now, I only plan on leaving this video posted for about 30 days. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm going to be replacing the battery and the key of a Lexus. I believe this is an ES330 2003 model. This is the battery you need. You need a tiny cross tip accessory screwdriver. If that ever comes in focus, let's get started. First thing you want to do is remove that screw there. Be extra careful not to strip it. When you put it back, you don't have to put it back so uh, tight. Take your little uh, screwdriver, take that out. Don't strip it, don't drop it, don't lose it. Now that that screw's all the way loose, lift it up and out of the remote. Harder than I thought with one hand. Then you want to pry the remote open. Ooh After it's open, you will see you have another unit inside here. And it has two tiny screws on it. Let me get those screws removed. Now that I got those two screws out, I got to open that up. And then the battery sits in there. I had taken it out earlier so that I could go get another one. Let me take this out of the wrapper and place it in there. Take the battery. Put the writing side up. Slide it inside the little remote unit. Make sure it's all the way in and clip down. Alright. You see there? It's got a little clip that's holding it down. I'm going to work that, make sure it's all the way in. Then I'm going to put this back on there, put the screws in it. After you got those two screws in, you can test the unit. Push a button and you'll see the red light light up that lets you know it is working. And go ahead and finish putting it together inside the key. Put it back in the remote so that the buttons are lined up. Close that up, snap it, screw it, and we'll be done. There you have it. It's all back together. It still works. Lights flashing. And remember, don't drop those screws. Those screws are like Mexican jumping beans. They jump, they run, they try to hide. Just don't lose them. This should be good to go. have to run a few brief errands before I go to the shop. Finish up that car stripped down. It's got to be a short day. It's gone too long yesterday. It wasn't good when I got home. It's almost a disaster. But I want to go to a couple of auto parts stores or to a auto parts store to see if they have hardware sacks little miniature tweed sacks with a tag on there and a drawstring that you can write notes on and store the parts or attach the parts to things as you take them apart. We used to use them in the military. Man, they were great. If I can't find them at the auto parts store down here, I will likely uh, check eBay for some. I'm going to find some because that would be helpful when tearing a car apart, attach the hardware to it. Even if they don't need it, it's good to have extra hardware for stuff like that. Then I'm going to check with this company that's supposed to be packing and shipping head, cylinder heads for me to see what their pricing is, buy some more bubble wrap from them, and just uh, get to the shop and finish getting that stuff apart so that I can get uh, Steven his uh, parts for his transmission. Steven purchased that transmission from me uh, from the 97 
he's going to put it in his 96R manual transmission swap on that. I think he's going to do that on his own. He didn't want to request any assistance in handling that. Uh, and it kind of looks like the transmission that I'm getting out of the Ghost is a very good transmission. However, it looks a little different. I'm wondering if it's a M56L instead of an M56. Eight. I don't think that matters to me because I hope the gearing's the same. The gearing might be different. I don't know. But uh, most people say it's good to get the M56 8 because it's a more durable, robust transmission. And uh, so, anyway, that's where I'm at. And uh, I'm going to put it in here. And I'm not going to be modifying the Panther to make it uh, any more aggressive, whatnot. So, anyway, we'll see. I'm going to see if I can find some kind of label or identification on it today. The good thing is that I uh, have a transmission that's a direct drop in my 95. Shouldn't have to do any wiring for anything other than the reverse light. So, let me keep on rolling. Alright, I'm back here. This cage looks a little different. The body of this transmission looks a little different than the last one, but heck, I don't know. I need to find some identification tags. So, first plan for today is get this transmission out of here and check the flywheel and stuff like that. So, let me get started. Wiring harness came up over the transmission and I see where it plugged in down there on that sensor. So, need to unplug that. Then there's another bolt there that's kind of hard to get to. I need to unplug, uh, remove that bolt there in this mount. That bolt. I was told that this bracket is unique to the manual transmissions, so you will need that. Transmission's off, so right now I'm looking for plugs to plug up the uh, axle holes so the fluid doesn't leak out. I did not drain it. And that's what everything looks like that's supposed to be on the end of that throw out bearing arrangement. So somehow, when I took this off at the junkyard, this did not come off properly. It probably broke it. So, uh, Steven will need this. I'm going to put this back on here. It went on like that. Actually, the sales plugs to put in there. So, I'm going to put those in there temporarily. And I'm looking for the ID markings on it after I get those holes plugged so I don't leak my fluid out. Off with the clutch and pressure plate. This one has the improper bolts on this. It's supposed to be uh, Allen's, but they're hexes. So, I'm going to go ahead and pull this stuff off, see what it looks like, and go from there. When removing the pressure plate and the clutch, from the flywheel, uh, you need to know that there's pressure pushed on those springs in there. So you need to remove these bolts in a pattern, star pattern, break them loose, quarter of a turn, loose them, loosen them some more, half a turn, and then take them out in a star pattern. Still has a relatively good clutch, but somebody was riding it because you can see the wear on this pressure plate that can be turned. All this stuff was new 10,000 miles ago. But that's why you get all that dust in there from somebody riding the clutch. So I'm gonna take this, clean it up, check the surface of them, and get one of these over to Steven. Here are the two flywheels. This one came off of the 97, and this one came off of the 95. You may be able to see it, the one off the 95, 
has some grooves in it kind of like a rotor wood so that needs to be taken to the machine shop and turned this one off the 97 it didn't have any grooves in it so what we want to do with this one is clean it up like I'm doing there and inspect it for cracks make sure there's no cracks or imperfections in it this one probably won't have to be turned an electric drill here with this thing on there that's designed to clean off the uh, material or buildup off of rotors and things like this at the Volvo dealer picking up JP's part I stopped at home and picked up this nice looking shirt I promise you Nobody ever asked me to look at a car when I'm dressed like this. So, in and out, no problems. Sales people don't even say hi. Whenever one of my viewers hit the lottery and send me a few million bucks, I'm going to come up here and buy me a V90 special order. Come up here, dress just like this, and pick it up. I was at the shop yesterday and one of the customers came by with one of those 2017 XC90s. He actually used the special Volvo buy-in program to purchase the truck. Basically how that works is you contact Volvo and they let you special order a car at the factory in Sweden. You pick out the features, the color, and all those things that you want on the car they build the car to your specifications and when it rolls off the lot you drive it in Sweden I think you get 14 days then they take the car and they ship it back to the US so you get a free vacation to Europe with the purchase of your vehicle I think the actual cost of the vehicle is about the same as if you would have purchased the vehicle here in the US. So it's literally a free trip to Sweden and you get a little bit nicer vehicle customized to your taste. Great deal. Anyway, this guy and his wife actually stayed there for like three or four months instead of the two weeks because of that uh, they could not keep the car the whole time they had to turn the car in within 60 days get it shipped back and then they rented a mercedes-benz suv for their remaining time there the guy said hands down the volvo was way nicer than the Mercedes. Road nicer, smoother, more features, is just a lot better vehicle in his opinion. So if you're thinking about an XC90, make sure you test drive both if you're looking at a high-end uh, European SUV. And that goes for any of those cars, man. Volvo's technology is advanced as anybody else's, if not better. Out here with you and John Paul to get down here so I can do this cooling hose hopefully real quick. See he got that hinge replaced. The hood is down and he got this straightened out. Getting closer. I got the vent tube off. Trying to get the hose off. It's got a normal clamp on that side funny clamp on that side hose looks shorter so as long as I can get it on there I'm fine let me try to pop this loose and unscrew that and get this hose off of it well unfortunately to me that hose actually looks good unless it's coming off the pipe Maybe it's coming off the pipe. Yeah, it might be bad. It looks like it's bulging on that side. Let me get it off. 
Cause if that ain't it, it's one of these heater hoses and that'd be another mess. Had to cut a little bit of that hose off. The new hose was shorter. I mean, the old hose was shorter than the new hose, but got it clamped on there. Got it clamped on there. Go ahead and put this intake back together. The turbo spins good. Didn't have any play in it. So that should be good. So let me hook this intake tube up. Fill it up with coolant and hopefully that was it. And it's not one of these heater hoses. I didn't see anything but man over here dripping on this side. It's these heater hoses or that turbo hose. One or the other. Putting as much as I can in there. I got everything hooked back up. The battery was disconnected. I hooked it up. I'm going to get them down here to start it. And we'll check it for leaks. That is done. And I am officially out of time. As you guys see, my oil change reminder is lit. I also want you to see that I have driven a little over a thousand miles since my transmission started acting up. So, transmission is holding about where it was when I put that Lucas in there. And I'm um, still rolling along. Catch you tomorrow. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.